Now this is uh, going to be a self-portrait of Botticelli from his famous artwork, The Adoration of the Magi, where he portrays himself in the painting. So, of course, I'm drawing this one upside down, and you can see where I'm starting at. This is give me an objective, completely objective uh, view of it, and I'm trying to draw what it is I'm seeing and not what I think I'm seeing, and hopefully uh, that'll work. But uh, I start off, you know, basically the basic parts. You have to lay in where you're going to put your eyes. I found you have to do that, and that is for sure, because I've messed up several drawings just not doing the basics. So you learn as you go along. And I think his chin is too... His chin is a big chin, and I put it in too small. And so I have to redo it. I redo all the features on the face, and uh, it just takes a while. I, I first learned about all these artists back when I was uh, at Berea College. When I first went there, we uh, learned about it in art history. Mr. I think his name was Boyce, and he he had us in art history, uh, all of us, and we watched this film about the titans of art, and it was about the Renaissance artists. And one of them was, uh, I think, Botticelli. I'm not for sure, because I think he is, and I know he is early Renaissance, but we saw about Leonardo and all the other Ninja Turtles. Raphael, he's, he's one of them, and so is Donatello. But Donatello, I think, is more early Renaissance, like Botticelli. Uh, his style, though, I thought, wow, this should be easy because he's early Renaissance. Early Renaissance has got to be much easier than high Renaissance. Well, I was so wrong about that. Early Renaissance uh, with Botticelli is still difficult to draw. And it was a challenge. I kind of think it's like uh, fishing and you're trying to reel in a fish and it's fighting you the whole time, um, but it's worth it. So, you, you know, you're just going to keep reeling and it's going to keep trying to get away. And I used to fish a lot. So I kind of uh, relate to that analogy. So this is kind of like that. Don't just stop. Now, look, I could just say, okay, I'm done. I don't want you to do a line drawing. I want you to delve into drawing this and really try to bring out the features. And it may look horrible. I think this is the fourth one of these I did in a row of this particular subject uh, of the Botticelli today and I drew it I drew a whole bunch on each one of them and finally I just said this one's just not going any further it can't be fixed and each one I learned a little bit on so then I got to this one and uh, I I think I thought to myself you know I think I can pull this one off I just have to hang in there and that's what I did. I just kept drawing on it and changing it. And each time I go back in, I try to make it look a little bit more like it. And I, I sped up the footage because it's a long time. But you're actually seeing uh, most of it that I'm drawing. Now, there's a bit that I drew off camera. But, you know, I didn't draw all of it on camera. But you get to see a big portion of it drawn on camera. So you can see where I laid in everything. And, uh... It's pretty simple. It's like I do the nose. I have a ball at the end of it and then a little ellipse out from it. And that's if I'm going to do a three-quarter. And I think three-quarter is the best way to go with a portrait. It's difficult. So that's why you should do it. Because it's not easy. Do a three-quarter and learn to draw in that style. You know what I mean? In that type of portrait, which is three-quarter, not string. And so I think the three-quarter is much better. Profile is a lot easier, but... You know, if you really do a portrait of a person, you need to do it as a three-quarter and not right in f front. You know, with the eyes and the nose and the mouth. I'm thinking you should do a three-quarter portrait. That's what I want you to do. And if it's horrible, it's horrible. But, um, do it. And you'll learn a lot. Get out of your comfort zone. I mean, I don't think this quite looks like him at all. But I'm just going to keep working on it. 
Eventually, I bring it around to where it kind of looks like him. It takes a while. I'm thinking, what is it about this portrait that doesn't look like him yet? I'm starting to work a little bit with the hair. Probably shouldn't. I should work on eyes. I'm giving them a break. Now, this is copy paper, so you can only do so much with it. And then if you make one mistake and rip that copy paper, because it's real thin, you have to redo the whole thing over again. So you got to be easy on it. You can't bear down a whole lot. It's coming along. Looks kind of like George Washington or something right now. But uh, it'll go through a lot of stages, and some of them will not be pretty. That eye, you got to get that eye that's closest to you. Right? And that nose, that nose is real particular about how it needs to be positioned, or else it won't work. So I had to fight with that. But I learned a lot, and that's what I want you to do. See, the thing, number one thing I see in a lot of my students' artwork is there's just not enough effort in the work. It's just like they just did it really quick and rushed it out, and then they want me to tell them how awesome it is. I'd rather they show me lots of lines on the paper and shading and value and how much effort you put into it than to just rush through something and say, I'm done. I mean, that's not really putting any effort in it at all. I probably put a couple of hours in this one on and off during the day. I drew it for students to draw, so it's an assignment for them. Those eyes are not right just yet. And I do not know why I go to the hair. I think it's like, I know I can do hair, so I run over there and do a little hair. So I can just stay away from that eye. So here we go, we're drawing down the side. And we're shading. I just shade and turn the picture around. See, I have some students that just trace. I know it. They know I know it. But they're not learning anything. In order to really learn from drawing, you have to draw. And you may turn out a bunch of really bad drawings. I was reading about uh, Vermeer, and he had a device called a camera obscura. And that may explain why many of his paintings are just a certain size, because he had a box, and it would project the image onto the canvas. Kind of makes sense now. Uh, I'm drawing this size image because right there above it is the image I want to draw. And I, I need to run through as quick as I can for the students. Plus, I want the students to see the image that I'm drawing as I'm drawing it. So it's right there above the image I'm drawing is the image I need to draw. So they can see how I'm doing it. So if I had it off to the side, they'd never be able to see what I'm doing. But right now they can. They can use any technique they want to. But I just don't want it traced. I just don't think tracing is going to... Uh, I don't think it's going to do it. You're not gonna you're not gonna learn anything. So you need to really uh, you need to really put effort into it. See now look, I'm just fussing with this and fighting with it and the chin. He has a huge chin. I have never drawn a chin this big before on a person. If I don't draw it right, it'll look like a girl. So, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make him... Now he has all those curls in his hair. 
And so I've got to draw him and make him look like uh, a guy with this strong chin and jawline. And then those eyes, I've got to get those eyes just right. Uh, there's just so much here to do. And the shading has to all be put in. So as you're watching me do it, you can be doing it too. I'm going to, I'm talking you through it. And that mouth, the, the way the top lip just curves around. Uh, you should pull this this one up on your computer. It's it's uh, Botticelli self portrait from the Adoration of the Magic. He literally is just turned and facing out of the painting at whoever's looking at the painting. So if you want to look that up, you can you can actually see. You can see the real thing. So this is just a close-up of that, of him looking toward the viewers. And that's pretty neat. He puts himself in the painting. Now, he lived about the same time as uh, Leonardo da Vinci, when da Vinci was a younger, and uh, they worked for the Medici's. Uh, Lorenzo. And so they made art, lots and lots of art. And that's what they were about, was making artwork for these uh, rich banking uh, family members. And so they, they made a lot of artwork. Uh, a lot of it's religious in nature. And they did a lot of portraits, too, of the Medici family. And the Medici family was, uh, they were very wealthy. They were rich bankers uh, that lived in Florence, Italy. And so they had a direct line to all the money uh, in Italy at that time. And then they even expanded out their uh, banks to other parts of Europe. So they became more powerful. The Medicis went on to marry their family members in into most of the royal households of Europe, and they're still around today. Their descendants are. It's Lark looking a little better. I mean, you know, it's still pretty wonky looking. I mean, there comes a point in time where you just have to... It looks like I'm showing his teeth in there, and I, I don't need that. That might be a holdover from when I was drawing the girl with the pearl earring. So I think that's what that is. Sometimes I put little pieces and parts of the last drawing into the drawing that I'm doing next. I don't know why. So I have to take those out. But this one's coming along. It's not quite there yet. It takes more work. I'll look at it and lay it down. Leave it alone. But I made this one uh, all in one day. And it, I'm worried about those eyes I have erased so much. The good thing about these cheap pencils I'm using, these jots, they're called jot pencils, is the erasers are really soft. So if I was using a hard eraser, I would just rub right through that paper by now. And copy paper is what my students use, a lot of them to draw with. And some of them use line paper, and I really get on to about line paper. So don't use line paper. Line paper is not what you need to use. You need to use uh, at least copy paper. If you want to get fancy sketchbook paper, you can. I think that'll be great to use when you get better. I think it'd be great to use when I get better at drawing. Right now, I don't think I'm quite there yet. Uh, I don't know when I'll get there. I may never get there. Uh, it's kind of like a journey. And so my journey is right now, I'm just trying to draw the best I can with copy paper. That's why it looks so shiny in places, because copy paper's not all that great to draw on. So I have to move the drawing around just so the camera can see it. So, you know, I see it just fine, but if I want the camera to see what I'm drawing, I have to move it around because it's so shiny. I get that just right. Now, he looks at you like... He's kind of like thinking, I am the artist who did this. I don't know how I would otherwise define that look. But it's pretty neat. Uh, it It's good to go see. I get that cheekbone in there too, just right. 
it's, it's going to take a while. I think it's looking sort of like it. Those curls on his hair are hard to draw. Well, they're not really, but they're kind of fun, actually. But I didn't draw them exactly like they were in the picture. I don't draw anything exactly like it is in any of the pictures. I just try to learn from the way they drew things in those pictures. I mean, you can tell mine's not traced. Some of them are pretty bad. But, you know, I learned a lot in each one I drew. Now, if you call tracing me using my thumb or index finger on my other hand to figure out where I'm drawing at, I guess that would be, but that's about it. Uh, my drawings take a long time, and they're pretty clunky, some of them. Most of them. Let's just say all of them. Hopefully, someday I'll get better, though, and uh, they won't be as bad. That eye's hard to get just right. Now, if I was to trace this, I'm pretty sure I could trace it and make it look just right. However, what am I learning? Nothing. I'm not learning anything. And I want to learn from this drawing. So, I don't trace. I just keep drawing. And you may have to draw five or six or seven or eight of them to get it to look right. I knew I was worried after the fourth one. I drew this and it didn't work out. However, I just kept drawing it. And eventually I figured it would look right. It's looking better. I could just stop right here with it. I mean, it's not terrible. I've noticed that when I do draw, like on uh, half of the paper, I tend to draw it every time larger than the original, which is okay. Uh, my main focus is the facial features and what I can learn from drawing them. And I have learned so much. So let's say I draw somebody, you know, a picture of them. I'm more than likely going to use these techniques I've learned to draw the picture better. I'll most likely do a three-quarter. I don't want to do straight-on frontal portrait of them. I think those are kind of boring. And the more I think about them, the more boring I think they are. Look, it's looking better. But it's still got problems. So I finally just take it off camera and I work on it some. And just patiently working with little parts of it. Try to make it look better. And you're going to have to do that too. It might take you several days to draw something like this. Just looking at one little part at a time. But if, it, if you can make it better, that's great. That eye is not right. So I'm going to have to work on it. For one thing, it's too far over. The one that's closest to us. But I'm liking it. I mean, it kind of looks like it was done in the Renaissance. Uh, it doesn't look like his picture just yet. But it looks like it was drawn during that time period. And I, I put some hair down here. But then I'm like, oh no, it's too far down. So I erased some of it. I'm like, oh yeah, I messed that up. Later I fix all that. Right now though, I'm gonna I'm just gonna try to fix it best I can. I'm trying to figure out how far over I need to put his neck. I think I moved his neck further over in the back. Uh, his neck is a lot thicker than I originally made it. And so I just kept making his neck thicker and thicker. I don't think it looks terrible, but I don't think it looks just like him yet. Or even close to it. I Well, maybe, you know, but it's not like somebody from that time period. Now, I'm going to take this off camera, and when you see it again, and you're just in a second, you'll see that I've made a lot of changes to it. And here they are. So, oh, it looks more like him now, because I just kept working on it, and working on it, and working on it. And, uh, I mean, it's still not identical. I'll never get it to look identical, but it looks better. And that's just patience, and you just keep working on it, and working on it. And finally, you'll get it to look better.
You have to look for the little details. So don't give up. Don't throw it away when the going gets tough. Just hang in there and just keep drawing on it and spend like several hours on it. And then I think you will have a better drawing for it. And even if it looks horrible, at least you'll have learned something. Don't turn out just a really simple little line drawing. I want to see lots of value and shading and well, just to be simple and blunt about it, I want to see a lot of lines on the paper that you put in there showing me effort. I want to see where you erased and you really struggled with it and worked on it. Now, if you're better than me and you can draw it in like a few seconds or minutes, that's well, in a few seconds, you're really good. But And then put all the shading in there, which I don't know if you could or not. Now, some of you are going to work on a tablet and you can do all kinds of things with tablets, like move the eyes and the head and tilt it. And, but I'm just asking you to draw on paper. Get it to where you can do this on paper. It's easy to get paper and pencil. Just number two pencil. I'm not even using special erasers. So that's what I want you to try. Okay? Alright, I've talked you through this whole thing. And uh, I want you to be drawing uh, a Botticelli self-portrait from the Adoration of the Magi. At least give it a try. It's good to learn how to do portraits.